Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very nice problem from American mathematics competitions. Also known as AMC, this problem is from AMC 12 2004, I think it's AMC 12B and correct me if I'm wrong. So the statement of the problem is actually a little different, I tweaked it because I don't know, I just wanted to do it. I modified it a little bit, make it more appropriate for a thumbnail. But the original problem says, a function f is defined by f of z equals i times z bar, where i is the square root of negative 1 and z bar is the complex conjugate. How many z's can be found satisfying both of these equations? Absolute value of z equals 5 and f of z equals z. But if you replace f of z with that, set it equal to z, you get the new statement of the problem. So it's the same problem, just stated a little differently. Okay? Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can solve this problem and this kind of problem. If you remember, we've done similar problems before, and we used a method that was pretty much a standard for these kinds of problems. And that was replacing z with a plus bi. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace z with a plus bi in both of these equations. The second one is a little easier. The square root of a squared plus b squared equals five, which gives me a squared plus b squared is equal to 25. This is great because I got some information about the a and b, the real and imaginary parts of z. Okay? Now if you plug everything into the first equation, which is i z bar equals z, then you get the following. What is z bar? z bar is the complex conjugate, right? So if z is a plus b i, z bar can be written as a minus b i. So to find the complex conjugate of a number, you just change the imaginary part. You negate the imaginary part. You, nothing happens to the real part. So by definition, if you multiply a complex number and its conjugate, their product and sum are both real numbers. Okay? And that's the only pair, unique pair, that satisfy this property. Great. So let's go ahead and plug it in. i times a minus bi is supposed to equal a plus bi. How is that possible, right? You multiply a complex conjugate by i and you get the original number. Let's see. i times a is a i, not artificial intelligence, but close. And then i times i is i squared, so this is going to be negative b i squared, but that's just positive b because i squared is negative 1. By the way, if you're new to complex numbers, I would highly recommend uh, my lecture videos. I made about 8 or 9 videos, I think, on basics of complex numbers. Now, Let's go ahead and write the left-hand side in standard form because that looks so non-standard. B plus AI equals A plus BI. Wait a minute. How is this possible? Like you have a complex number, you're interchanging the real and imaginary parts, but you're still getting the same number. I guess that can only happen if A equals B, right? From here you get B equals A and A equals B. That implies A equals B because equality is kind of a two-sided thing, right? Even though it's right, written from left to right most of the time. Okay, this is good because A equals B gives us really good information, especially when we have another equation. So let's go ahead and put these two together. A squared plus B squared was 25 from the second equation. Remember the absolute value. And we now know that A is equal to B. Great. So can we use this information? Let's go ahead and replace B with A. That gives us a squared plus a squared equals 25. And then 2a squared equals 25. And then a squared equals 25 over 2. Now, you might want to square root both sides at this point and find a and then rationalize the denominator. If you don't like rationalizing the denominator, just double the top and the bottom and write this as 50 over 4. So you have a perfect square at the bottom. If you can never get this, then that's going to be a different story, but you should always be able to get it because whatever number you have, just multiply by the same number, right? So now we can go ahead and square root it, and from here, a is going to be the square root of 50 divided by 2 with a plus minus sign, of course, but square root of 50 is basically 
square root of 25 times 2, which is 5 root 2. So this can be written as plus minus 5 root 2 over 2. But since a and b are equal, b is also going to be plus minus 5 root 2 over 2. But this means what? This means that the value of b basically depends on a. So one of the solutions to this equation is going to be 5 root 2 over 2 plus 5 root 2 over 2i. And for the other solution, we're basically going to just use the negative value, negative 5 root 2 over 2 minus 5 root 2 over 2i. So are those the only solutions that satisfy the system or are there any other solutions, right? Well, uh, those are going to be the only solutions. And there is no real solutions <laughs> to these equations. Z is complex, so we found the most complex cases. Make sense? Okay, so this, this could probably be considered the first... Oh, by the way, the original... I forgot to mention. The original problem actually did not ask for solutions. It did ask for the number of solutions. So it's actually an even easier problem. It said, how many values of z will satisfy both of these equations? And the answer would be 2 in this case. So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this is the answer. The answer is 2. You could also look at this kind of like a graphically. We have a circle with radius 5 centered at the origin. And then we do have a line. And then they intersect at two points, so on and so forth. Make sense? Okay, so that's one way to look at it, but let's go ahead and see if we can approach it slightly differently. For example, uh, can I use these equations to, you know, maybe multiply both sides by z? Isn't that going to help? Because z and z bar should give me something nice, right? Okay, let's try it. Multiply both sides by z. I'll do it here. I z bar z equals z squared. And then z times z bar is actually absolute value of z squared. And that's just awesome, don't you think? So this is going to be absolute value of z squared multiplied by i is z squared. But I do know that the absolute value of z is 5. It's given. Awesome. So I can plug it in, and this is going to give me what? 25. Wow, that's really cool. So z squared becomes 25i. So z becomes 5 square root of i, right? Or with the plus minus sign, of course. So plus minus 5 square root of i. But square root of i has two values if you really think about it. And what are the square roots of i? Okay, great. Good question. The square roots of i actually can be found by writing i in polar form. And i can be written as e to the power i pi over 2. So if you square root it, you're going to get e to the power i pi over 4. And of course, this is going to be with a plus minus sign, or you can kind of write it like this if you want. And uh, the cosine of pi over 4 is going to be root 2 over 2, and you're going to get the exact same answer from here. So hopefully you can do the rest of this because it's fairly easy. That's going to give me the answer. Of course, the answer is going to be z equals plus minus 5 times e to the power i pi over 4. So our solution is complete. All right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.